does this look familiar? You feel like you are trying to juggle all the things, but sure that you are going to drop something um, and it's leaving you stressed. You're not eating, you're not, or eating what you know you should eat, you're not sleeping like you know you should sleep, um, you're not following the routines um, and kind of the practices that you've put in place, and now it's starting to not just affect your work or your day-to-day -day life, but it's also affecting your relationships with your kids, and you're starting to be angry and yell more often, be really snappy at them. If that is you, if you're feeling super stressed by just all the chaos of raising out-of-the-box kids, that is what we're going to be talking today um, all about because I have got a special friend coming live and she is going to be sharing about how she went from completely stressed out overwhelmed. Matter of fact, she says, you know, um, how she went from being a stressed out parent, working multiple jobs, trying to juggle all the things. She said she yelled a lot and, you know, she just had all these negative feelings that just kept flowing. She was trying time out and go to your room. And, um, and it was just happening on a more frequent basis. And now she's actually been able to calm not just her family, but also herself. She's getting more rest and she has more energy than she ever has before. And she loves her family life together. If that sounds like a transformation that you would like, then you definitely want to stay tuned because I'm, like I said, I'm going to be bringing on a really special guest and she's going to be sharing her story and the plan she used to get from one place to the next. So I'm going to bring her on if we can welcome the amazing Louie Lynn. Hello, Louie Lynn. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I am so good. Now, um, we had a little chat right before we got started. And um, I, I thought it was interesting because we were talking about how like this going from this overwhelmed, stressed out. And I said, does this look right? Does this look like you? And you were like, yes, yes it does, right? Um, but we talked about how it's not perfect, right? How, no. um, you know, there was definitely a time very recently where you kind of went back into that old way of managing yeah. stress, right? Yeah. Um, so let we're going to talk about that in just a little bit as well. But I like to kind of bring up that very realness right at the beginning when people are like, yeah, it must be nice for her, right? To like get rid of that stress. Um, if you've got any stress that you're dealing with, if you feel like you're that overwhelmed, juggling a million things, can you just put stress in the comments so that we know um, that this is resonating for you and this is something that's helpful for you? Um, Louie, tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Um, so my my family and I, we live in Hawaii. Um, my husband and I are originally from California. We moved here about 10 years ago. Um, so we don't really have family here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just us. And we have four um, kiddos ranging in age from 10 to 3. And so there's all kinds of demands and needs of every single minute of the day from screens to just a bottle of milk. Um, and we always, um, we always kind of joke with our family when we talk to them, just how crazy our house is because it's always loud. It's always kind of chaotic. Um, and for the most part, it's like lovely chaos, right? It's a lot of laughter. It's a lot of um, loud voices, but it's the kids playing. Um, and then, and then there's those times when it's, um, loud chaos that's not so awesome and a lot of the times that can come from me too um yeah and so um talk to me you said like how would you describe your like you kind of said like this lovely chaos um like i have um i have a sign in my kitchen that says welcome to our beautiful chaos right um and and yeah it's not that there's no chaos like a dog might run in we were talking about this earlier right you've got all your kids home i've got all my kids home um i even have a cousin over you know my daughter has a cousin over and so it could just who knows what could happen here? Um, but to me, it's lovely chaos. It's not the kind of chaos we had eight years ago. Um, so um, talk to me a little bit about what that chaos used to look like. Um, so before I had joined um, Calm the Chaos, um, you know, I and I'm, I'm still working multiple jobs, but I was working uh, multiple jobs without any form of um 
establish self-care. Like I knew about self-care. I knew I should meditate. I knew I should take some time for myself, but I didn't really know how to or not necessarily at, at, or how I could do it at home in the two minutes in between craziness. Um, and how to fit that in. Mm. Um, so I would get completely stressed out um, when I'd have a, a project that I, I would work on at home and by a project like a work project, because I also work from home as one of my jobs. Um, and I could feel, I could physically feel that stress, that tension mm. in my shoulders. And then like I have eczema. And so every single time, that would flare up and then I'd start getting like neck pains. I mean, like I, I could physically feel that, Mm -hmm. that, that stress. And then everything went crazy. Like I would stopped managing the house and um, stopped playing with the kids and they, and and then it just felt like they were asking more of me just at Mm -hmm. those moments when I just couldn't give anything. Um, so it was a lot of um, like emotional guilt as well mm-hmm. because I felt like I was supposed to do all the things and I I felt like I, I had to play with the kids or I'm supposed to be playing with the kids. I'm supposed to be making them dinner instead of peanut butter and jelly for dinner or breakfast, you know, or, or cereal for dinner because I just couldn't. And um you know, and, and then when um, when I found Spark through Calm the Chaos, I was like, that's what I need. That's what I definitely need. Because if I if I couldn't get a hold of myself, there was no way that I was going to be able to help the kids. Yeah, I totally hear that. So we're going to talk about that, that spark plan, but just real fast in contrast, you talk about having no time, not even two minutes for yourself. You talk about then feeling guilty. You feel like not wanting to play with your kids, having those, those personal flare ups, um, you know, with the eczema and with your body hurting. And I can totally relate to all of that. Um, Having that buildup of stress. You told me earlier that there was a lot of yelling. Um, There was a lot of like old way parenting strategies, like falling back into like, go to your room or a timeout or a punishment. Um, And so um, before we get to the spark, you didn't just magically get to this new lovely chaos, right? Um, So I want to talk about what is the new lovely chaos look like? Um, Like what is the replacement of all those things? And then I also want to talk about some of the things that maybe you tried in the past um, or was this the first thing you had ever tried? Um, so the lovely chaos is, um, so we live in an apartment building. Um, so we have neighbors, you know, right, right on the other side of the wall. And so my husband and I are always really conscious of our noise level, especially with a big family in a small space. Mm. Um, so when the kids are getting loud, it's like, oh, I hope you're not disturbing the neighbors, but Mm. I'm not about to stop them when they're loud because they're playing together or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're enjoying some, some time together in their room doing whatever it is that's causing them, um, laughter or, um, my three-year-old is discovering his body like in big ways. And so he's, (laughs) he's jumping off the furniture. He's like pretending to be dinosaur or a construction vehicle. And so he like pounds the floor (laughs) And, um, I, before, like, I, I would try to stop that or quiet Mm -hmm. it down, but now I'm, I'm like, well, I don't, I don't want to stop it. I will silently apologize to my neighbors and like be (laughs) ready if they, they come up and, you know, and make a comment and which they've never have. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's a lot more of the kids um feeling like they can they can express themselves mm. um a lot better and a lot more without any repercussions or comments or um scoldings or anything yeah and then what about the guilt and your amount of time you have and your stress your flare ups the yelling how is that still part of this chaos it's um it's still a part of the chaos but it's 
it's so much more different than before. Like okay. if, if, if it start if my stress starts to build up and I start sliding back into like uh, an old me, um, instead of sliding all the way down to the bottom, um, I can catch myself now. Mm. Um, I can catch myself and I can stop and I can pause and be like, okay, and, and ask myself, okay, what do I actually need right now? Mm. Can I give it to myself or can I at least give myself a smaller version? Or, mm. um, you know, if the kids are throwing a tantrum, instead of being like, why are you going nuts over your blanket on the floor? <laughs> um, you know, I can, I can stop and like try to figure out, okay, why are you really going nuts? What is this really about? Oh, you didn't take a nap. You need a nap right now. Right. Let's go cuddle. Like I can, I can stop myself before it gets to where it used to be. Yeah. Um, or I would just keep riding that, that crazy storm. Um, and, uh, and, and like physically, I still, I still can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, the stress, but um, I've been able to imagine manage it so much better and mm -hmm. and just give myself what I need. Like if I need rest, if I need water. Um, mm, I love that you're meeting your needs. I, I hear a lot of that. That's really cool. Um, and, and I think that sometimes we have this misconception that um, that when we start to take care of ourselves or when we start to kind of work on reducing stress, that it's this magical like Zen life where you're, where there's no opportunities to be stressed out, where your kids aren't going to, you know, cry over spilled milk or over the banana oatmeal or over the banana or the, you know, blanket on the floor. That's just still going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, but it's your, your inner ability to yeah. uh, to handle that stress. And then I loved how you said, like, to be able to ask yourself, like, how much can I give or can I give my give a little less of me right now? Like, do they really need all of this? You know, and how can I meet my own needs and what needs do they need met? And I absolutely love that. Um, so let me ask, like, what are some of the things that you tried before getting a plan? Because I feel like that's what really made the difference is having a personalized plan for yourself for time and energy. So, um, so what did you try before that? Or was this the first thing? Um, no, I mean, I tried, I've, I've tried like little, little things like, mm -hmm. um, taking a couple minutes for myself, um, with a cup of coffee away from the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I have tried meditation. I've tried journaling, um, and, and not that they didn't work, but that they, they just weren't like strong enough in yeah. by itself to really help me, um, get through. Um, and, uh, we don't have a, we don't have a babysitter. We don't have childcare. So mm -hmm. being by myself was really hard. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I'd like lock myself in the bathroom just mm -hmm. to get <laughs> just to get a few minutes or like hide behind the cabinet um, door in the kitchen and eat some chocolate. Um, yeah. just if you have ever hidden in the car, in a bathroom, behind a closet door, can you just like put a little gif or an emoji in the comments that you have hidden? <laughs> because I think that, you know, that is like an unspoken truth of motherhood. That is definitely something that we, that we do more often than I think is talked about. I used to, um, I used to tell when my husband would get home at, in the evenings. I used to um, tell him like, um, pretty soon after he got home that I had to go grocery shop, I had to run an errand. And so yeah. I go into the car, drive away, get an ice cream or Taco Bell for myself, sit in the car before I actually ran the errand. And so I'd be out for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, Jason is always asking me, or we call him, you know, Mr. Lemon Pickle on the, uh, you know, Mr. Lemon or Lemon Pickle, depending on where, you, what part of the program you're in. But um, he is always like, well, I'm not sending you to the store because you're going to take an hour. And I think it's what you just described. It's like my like time to do nothing. <laughs> it's like so lovely. Um, so I love that so much. And then you had told me before um, when we were talking before, and I'm going to have to let my dog in in a second here. They've got a big old door over there, but they're not like over there, of course. Um, so 
but you had told me that um, you had even gone to like experts with a doctor in front of them. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the things you had tried with experts? Well, I, um, I started working with a um, self-care coach uh, a couple, a couple years ago, or I guess, I guess longer than that um, because it was, you know, inherently it was something that I knew I needed and it was something that society always told me I needed um, self-care, but I just I didn't know what that looked like. So I figured let's go to someone that knows. And so they gave me the, um, the, the little activities to do the two minutes with the coffee, the take a scenic drive to your grocery store. Um, and that was, that was magical in the, in the beginning, especially because it just wasn't something that I did. So it had a really big impact. Um, and then after a while, like they kind of, it's, it started to lose its effects. Mm -hmm. And so then I kept searching for those other little things to do. So maybe I'd like um, do something creative because I love being creative. Do, try to do something creative um, in, in between things, um, which was great. But then like I get interrupted <laughs> with the kids or they'd want to. I mean, real life happened. You right. might like <laughs> exactly. Real life would happen. I'm like, well, this didn't work then. And yeah. Um, and what would happen? Like, did, how did the, the drink a cup of coffee and go to the store by yourself? Was that making a difference with the yelling and the stress and the way that you were handling your kids? Or um, did you need something that kind of encompassed more? It, it worked the first time. Ah, and okay. then, and then when I tried to do it again, because it had such a great um, effect, it, it wasn't as powerful. Like, mm -hmm. Like it was great to do those little things. It was like a great band aid. Like yeah. a, a great little like, oh, okay, this kind of like soothed the pain. It's kind of like when you mm -hmm. like get a sunburn, right? Like you put it like the aloe vera on there at first. But if you go back out in the sun, it's like, oh, no, wait, it's still yeah. hurt. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I needed something more. I needed something bigger oh, and I okay. needed something more lasting. Mm, that is really, that's really powerful. So let's talk about what you did. Because how many of you guys would like a plan that helps you be less stressful. Um, it helps, I mean, there's still going to be stress, but you know how to handle it. Um, you have more energy to handle it. You're more playful, more fun with your kids. How many of you guys would like that? Something that has more long lasting change instead of just a band-aid. If you would like that, go ahead and just put self-care in the comments. I know it's the naughty S word, but go ahead and just put that in the comments. And we're going to hear um, from Louie Lynn, about this time and energy plan that she created. Because here at Calm the Chaos, um, we that's one of the things that we kind of work on is helping you create a personalized plan for you and your family. Oh, I see baby. I, I, I gotta grab a bottle. Okay. Right back. <laughs> totally okay. Totally okay. This is so awesome. All right. So I'll, I'm gonna go to me just for a second while she deals with baby in the background, which is amazing. See, real life. I'm dealing with dogs. She's dealing with babies. Um, so, you know, what we're going to be, if you guys are just joining us, we've been talking with Louie Lynn about how um, she was feeling like she was just juggling all the things, super stressed out. She would get flared up and her body would hurt. She, there was no play in her house. It was a lot of yelling. It was a lot of like, you know, ultimatums. She doesn't really have a whole lot of help or family. Uh, she didn't have a babysitter or anything like that. So it was just her. Um, she was mul working multiple jobs and she just, you know, had a lot of guilt and no time. And she tried a bunch of stuff. She tried like the meditation time alone, you know, five minutes by herself even hiding in the bathroom, going to doctors, going to self-care coaches. And it all just seemed like a Band-Aid. And so what she needed, though, was something, and I love how she described this, something that was deeper, that was more long-lasting, that was actually going to continue to have a long-lasting effect on not just herself, not just her own self-care and her own energy, but also ripple into the family. And so um, Louie Lynn is going to walk us through the plan that she used uh, to get her there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I know a little bit about story. Here she is. She's coming back. So we're good. Awesome. Okay. Let me add her back in here. There she is. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So Louie Lynn, walk us through um, 
walk us through what um, what you created. Like, what was this plan, this magical uh, plan that you created? Um, so it was, um, you know, the very first module in Calm the Chaos, um, Spark, uh, which stood for Shift, Prioritize, Activate, Restore, Connect. And um, I, I started to tackle. So the, the very first thing I tried to do was tackle the whole word, right? Mm-hmm. The every, every category. Um, and that, that was very, very unsuccessful <laughs> because I found myself just going through the motion mm-hmm. of each one, which didn't have um, any effect, no effect whatsoever. Um, and so I, um, I, was, I started working with um, my coach in the Focus Forward Accountability Pods mm-hmm. and um, decided to turn, to, to choose a letter and um, work on it to make it a habit and something that mm-hmm. I um, had very so- solid foundations um, okay. in my actions. So you, so first you tried doing the whole plan and I find that that's what a lot of people will do, right? There's some great parenting books out there. There's some great mindfulness books out there and resources out there. But what we try to do is we try to implement the entire thing and then we feel like we're just failing at all of it, right? Yeah. So you got the advice to just pick one at a time and build a habit. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say pick one and then turn it into a habit. And we know that if you can change 1% at a time, then the, then you are winning, right? Like then yeah. you are going to make that progress that you're looking for. So talk me through it. I mean, sometimes people don't do these in order. Um, so talk me through, do you know um, what order you went through? Yeah. So um, the one that I consciously started tackling first was prioritize mm, okay. um, because I um, I know for me, one of the big stressors is time, time Mm -hmm. to do all of the things. Um, So I figured if I could start to have a handle on my time, or at least feel like I have a handle, then that would get me going on adding things to my to do list and not feel like it's another thing, but Mm -hmm. like it's, it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, when anytime I get off kilter, that's the first one I come back to, right? Like we had a really rough morning this morning and we were supposed to have a team meeting at nine. It was eight 45. And I was like, ah, fluster, fluster. Right. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and so then, you know, I was like, okay, prioritize. It's like, (laughs) what am I working on? Right. And that was, that was basically what I had to do is just say, okay, what are the big rocks today? Um, before I could make any plans. So I think that's a, that's such a great place to start if anyone's feeling really frazzled. Yeah. And it, it like kind of like for me, it took the the craziness of my to-do list that was in my head mm-hmm. and like put it down to where I could see it and actually, actually yeah. figure out, okay, what, what is going to be important for someone who's just starting out and they're like, well, I make to-do list all the time. And I, it just makes me feel worse. Or I make to-do list and I never get anything done. Is there just like one tip you would give them for to-do list? Um, I'd say brain dump, like everything, whether Mm -hmm. it's important, whether it's, whether it's big or small, just put Mm -hmm. it down all on paper. Um, Don't even think about it. Just put it all down because it feels like, it feels like you're taking that weight out of your mind and Mm -hmm. onto someplace else so that you don't have to carry that burden in your, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to remember all the things, all the things are written out for you already. And should they do all the things on that brain dump? Um, I do it whenever I'm stressed throughout the day. (laughs) Um, I've heard lots of advice to do it like at night to get you ready for the next day or in the morning to get you ready for your day. Yeah. Do you ever delete things off of your list after you've dumped it out? Like things that like you dumped it all out and then you're like, oh, that's not actually that important. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or, or I think that, um, I do want to tackle it, but it's not important. So I put it at the bottom of the list and then realize, 
I I didn't really need that there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, I think a key here, right. Is like a lot of people will put it down on paper, but then they just are like, Oh, and then my to-do list has a hundred items on it. Um, yeah, I love that so much. All right. So we go more into how to prioritize, um, in our programs and, and things like that. But, um, I want to make sure we kind of walk through your journey here. So we've got first you prioritize time and that helped you feel less stressful about the things on your plate. Is that Mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Okay, so then what did you do after that? Um, I started to do Activate with a friend. Um, so Christine Kreisel, who's also in our community, um, she and I started doing yoga together. And she's in Germany. So we figured out our time differences and um, figure out how to stream um, this online yoga program. And that's what we do every, um, yeah, almost every night, like five, five out of seven days a week. Um, we give each other weekends and then, you know, and, and then if things come up, then, you know, we'll message each other and say, hey, maybe we can do this tomorrow or can we do this a little later because the kids are sick or the kids are home or uh-huh. something. But so just um, moving, what did what did that do for you? What did that movement do? Um, because most people are thinking, well, that's not going to help. I'm adding more things in. So how is that helping you? How did that help you get to this lovely chaos? that just made me physically feel better. Mm-hmm. Like after, after doing that yoga and, and the program that we do, it's like 20 minutes. It's mm-hmm. not long. Um, yeah. But like, I would feel more energized. So I, I, I do it in my time zone at night and she does it in the morning. And so after I'm done and I take my shower, I'm like, wow, I'm feeling relaxed and I'm feeling like I could stay up for another six hours. <laughs> And then I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe I should have done that. But no, I'll just I'll just relax. <laughs> I but. love that so much. All right. So you got your pri- you started prioritizing your time. You started moving your body more, which gave you more energy and helped you feel more fit and healthy um, so that you could be there, you know, for the rest of your day. So what did you do next? Um, I figured out what I needed to recharge in the mm-hmm. afternoon. Um, I knew that for myself the afternoon when the kids were home um, from school was when I was low on my energy. Mm -hmm. I, um, that was when I figured out that I was stressed more Mm -hmm. um, and yelling more and uh, being a lot more impatient with their needs after school. Mm -hmm. Um, So I said, okay, this is, this is going to be the time where I insert something for myself. And that for me is taking like a quick nap. So I'll ask um, the older kids to watch their younger siblings for, um, for just a little bit. So I can have like a 10 minute nap or, you know, 20 minute if, if they end up have, if the younger kids end up having uh, naps also. Okay. Um, All right. So it seems like a lot of the first stuff really was about like time and energy. Like how do I get more time, less stress, more energy um, with these first three habits that you're building? Yeah. Cause that's what, I mean, that's what I felt like. um, That's for me, that's what I felt like I needed to tackle first in order to um, do better because that's what was, stressing me the most Mm -hmm. what I thought was the the lack of or actual lack of time and energy. So that was making it harder to be the parent you wanted to be because you didn't have the time and the energy to put into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can hear that. All right. So what was the next thing that you worked on? Um after that was shift. Okay. So talk me through shift because there may be people here that don't know what that means. So shift um is just being able to um, change your mindset or your perspective mm-hmm. um, on a situation or where you are or your thoughts or whatever that mental um, challenge may be. And um, I tried a lot of things for shift. I tried um, journaling and, um, you know, at, and, grat- and writing down gratitudes and not that they didn't work, but that they didn't they weren't the big thing for me mm-hmm. to shift my thoughts. Okay. Um, so what really worked for you? Like what was just the one that, that really stuck? Reading. 
Okay. Yeah. So I started off. I so I chose a book. It's called um, Soundtracks by John Acuff. Oh, yes. Um, That's a good one. I've got it actually sitting on my desk right here. It's on my list to read, but I've heard really great things from my husband about it. Yes. I, yeah, I, I, it was recommended by Jason. Um, but it is soundtracks is exactly what shift is about. So I think that's why it had such a big impact. Mm -hmm. Um, but it helped me, um, the book helped me change my mindset and my perspective on things, which helped me, which helped me remember to do that same thing throughout my day. If Mm -hmm. something was hard, um, yeah. And, so, yeah. because what would happen, let's say that you have all the time and energy in the world, but you've got this view on the world. Like it's, mm-hmm. I just watched Transylvania. So I've got this on my mind, but you know, the world is all burnt marshmallows. Um, you know, so like, if you only have this perspective that everything is bad and terrible, what would, what would that have done to the rest of your day? Well, then I would have been looking I would have been seeing all the bad and terrible things or seeing the things that I think are bad and terrible Mm. if that was what I um, kept viewing. And, and I know that because, um, you know, before calm the chaos, I, I had, I was having a really hard time with my son, with my oldest son. Um, And obviously before, before spark. And so um, I, I, kept seeing the negative things about situations that we're in um, and about him and he would do the same with me and um, and so I knew that um, shifting my mindset and shifting my perspective um, was was really important yeah yeah I mean and we see so many times and even with myself I'll find myself really, Um, if I'm falling backwards, it's because I'm starting to see things in that, in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I I say, well, what would, what would it make possible if I saw this differently? Right. Um, And that typically will open that up. All right. So we've got prioritize, activate, recharge, shift. And so that leaves the last one, right? Yeah. So the last one is connect for me. Um, I'm an introvert. So going up to people and having like cold chatter or warm chatter or like get to know you kind of situations is um is anxiety filled for me yes yeah <laughs> so it's really so did hard you find a way to connect that didn't require you to go against who you are as a person a little bit um I mean I, it's still something I'm working on um but I I was like, okay, well, let's start with people that I have, that I know, that I love, that I haven't been able to talk to because of the pandemic um, or visit because of the pandemic because we haven't been traveling. Let's start with them. So my best friends um, that are in, still in California, I was like, let me just send them a random text. And, um, and that's something we'll do anyway, but I started to do that more often. And so yeah. then they would text back and then... Um, we'd have these little mini conversations that were nice to have, right? Like the beeps on the phone weren't notifications of email or, or Facebook. It was like a text from a friend. Um, so that was really uplifting. And then um, we started having like uh, actual phone calls, you know, sometimes um, when we could squeeze it in and so it was, sometimes it would just be like a two minute conversation, but it was, it was huge. Like, to, to, to talk to another human. <laughs> um, it was, um, it was, it was like energizing. It was soul filling. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then I, I started to say yes more often when people would invite me to, um, you know, to have coffee or to meet up and, um, old me would, would usually be like, okay. And then try to see if I can get out of it. But, I was like, no, you said yes, you're going to do it. And you're going to say yes, because, um, you know, I get, I didn't give myself um, any reason not yeah. to. And, um, and so I would go and then there'd be a couple of times where it was like, okay, this is a little awkward, but okay, I'm out here in the world. I'm getting some sunshine. I'm getting some me time and I'm getting to know this person more. So again, it was just soul filling. 
I love that so much. I love how you describe that as soul filling. Um, so, so that's it, right? Like those five steps, shift, prioritize, activate, recharge, connect. Um, yeah. And I just want to really, you know, drive home this for anyone who's listening, who might be like, oh, well, I've done routines. I've done morning routines. I've done morning rituals. There was something very different here. Yours was about building habits and then stacking those habits on top of each other until you became a different person. Yeah. Um, and the ripple effect of that has been huge on you and your family. So can you talk about just kind of some big wins or little wins that you've had with your family since implementing this time and energy plan? Um, the kids are... Um, the kids are asking to play more, which is great. And I'm finding myself saying yes more, even if it's five minutes of blowing bubbles. Um, we started a wind wall of like highlighting our good things. And, um, and my son, my oldest son and my oldest daughter don't always get along. You know, they, there's a lot of sibling fighting that we, we have. Um, but recently he, he started a notebook, like all on his own. He's like, mom, I'm going to write down things that are great and things that are bad about my sister. <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. Why don't you leave out the bad things? A little you lost in translation. But yeah. okay. <laughs> and I said, you should try to do that every day. Just even something small, like you guys sat down and watched a YouTube video together without fighting. That's fantastic. Write it down. And, and he said every day I was like, yes, because then you can, you're, you need, you're looking for the good things in your day. He's like, all right. Um, I think that was the biggest, yeah. the biggest. Um, well, you haven't even mentioned one because this, all this time and energy that you've created and like this good, lovely chaos in your house, you know, you said you didn't used to play with your kids and now you've done something kind of remarkable around playing with your kids. Like, do you want to talk about what that is? Are you talking about the little traveling chef? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Like it is, it's just pretty remarkable that you describe your life as feeling guilty for not wanting to spend time with your kids or to play with your kids, you know, prior to setting up this plan. And now you've created something pretty magical to help others play and connect with their kids. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, under your mentorship data, I started um, this little baby company called The Little Traveling Chef, where, um, fam where I help families explore other countries um, by cooking in the kitchen and um, playing pretend restaurant with the, a recipe that's provided. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I've been... I... I've been doing the activities that I come up with with um, with my kids, and the first country we had visited was my own was was the Philippines. It's it's um, our heritage, and so um, I haven't shown this to anyone, but I actually made like wooden bread, and um, I made a little game out of it, and the kids were seeing me um, create it, and they're asking what it was, and I said, well, it's it's this, it's this bread that I've been making for you guys. Um, and, and I made this little game for them to learn um, numbers and they just they just started playing with it one day. Like it was just on my desk. Like I, I didn't mean for it to be like a toy for them yet because yeah. I was in the process and it's like my prototype, but they're like, oh, let's do this. And I was like, oh yeah, awesome. Let's keep going. What, <laughs> what else can we do with this guys? Um, yeah, and then and then my um, my girls have been asking to be in the kitchen more often to like cook and figure all this out, and then of course they enjoy what we end up making in the kitchen. But it's become this um, connection for us mm -hmm. as as I build this little this little company. Yeah. So remind me, what is it called again? It's called the Little Traveling Chef. 
the little traveling chef. And so yeah. after you are done, you'll have to let us know where we can find more about the little traveling chef, because um, I'm sure there are lots of people here who would love to connect with their kids, especially um, by introducing them to other cultures like that is just beautiful. So, um, so yeah. Um, is there anything that, um, that I didn't ask you about that you would love to share? Um, you know, I took, like, I've been working on this spark plan for months. Mm. It's not something that happened overnight. Um, it's, and there were times when I was like, this is agonizingly slow. <laughs> like I, can I just move on to the next letter? Can I just move on to the end? Um, but I knew that if I did that and if I skipped steps that it, it was, I was going to just go back to the beginning and, and that it wasn't going to work. So as agonizingly slow as um, it felt at times, I just kept pushing through until I felt confident that it was solid and it was a habit. Yeah. I love that so much. Really focusing on the habit, not just check, checking things off to say we checked yeah. off, right? Yeah. Um, and so were there times that you fell off? Oh, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, just before the ho the holidays, right? The end of the year, it's crazy with the holidays itself. But I ended up having um, a, this really big work at home project and um, it was massive. And like my mindset was already like, this is big. This is going to be really stressful. So starting off badly. And um, I, I got through December. I don't I survived December. I didn't thrive at all. Um, I didn't do any of my spark. I, I didn't do like, I, I think I only did half of yoga with Christine. I stopped drinking water. I stopped drinking coffee and found energy drinks. And <laughs> I know, like, I know that was a slippery slope to like to start sliding on, but it was like this really awesome band aid because I could stay up all night and do the work and then drink another one in the morning and get through the day. Mm -hmm. And somehow that now, ripple into your family at all. Yeah. I mean, I stopped playing with the kids. They were here for, um, you know, their winter break and we didn't leave the house because I was stressed with this, with this, um, project and, and I couldn't calm down enough to, um, to be like, yeah, let's go out and play. Right. Let's go to the playground for half an hour. Like that was not, an option. Mm -hmm. And um, all the physical things that I used to feel came back with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it was yeah, it was bad. Yeah. And so the good news is that you can restart reset, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think so often people I mean, you know, we're right now as we're recording this, it's, you know, mid January. And by now, most people have like, set an intention for the year and fallen off of that intention for the year and given up on that intention for the year. Um, and so hearing how far you had kind of fallen off the wagon and fallen off of these routines. Um, and now hearing you say that, oh, but I can get back, I can pick it back up. And, um, you know, I think is huge for people to hear that. Yeah, I mean, everything is a cycle, right? Like, we always talk about the seasons we're in, but it's the same for not just your home life, but for yourself, too. Mm -hmm. So I was in this bad season. <laughs> and yeah. so I just knew I had to, to change my perspective and my mindset and like, um, and, and I'd be okay, I just had to start. So I started with checking the energy drinks, got back on coffee and water, and uh, got back to sleeping. So sleep is good. I'm, yeah. I'm so glad, friend, that you're sleeping now. Um, uh, I love it. So just baby steps again. You started yeah. just building one habit at a time instead of like, okay, I'm going to cold turkey do all of this and change all of it. You were like, I'm just going to go one step at a time. I love yeah. that. Um, so, you know, we do um, you know, these workshops that are for free for people. And, um, and during that, we talk about creating a time and energy plan. But one of the things I hear from people so often is they don't even believe that, yeah, this is great. It's possible for you. It's possible for me, but there's no way it's possible for them because of 
whatever's going on in their life. Maybe they work multiple jobs or they're a single parent or they don't have any support or, you know, they just don't even have a minute to think, how are they going to create a plan? Um, and I've heard you kind of talk about a lot of those different things. So what would you say to someone who's thinking, there's no way this could work for me. Um, so I'm just not even going to try. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to, you just have to try it. I mean, if even if it's a tiny little thing, like I just started off with, um, like I said, with prioritize and um, I'm not a planner. I, before Spark, like everything was in my head or post-it notes in like more chaos. Um, and I said, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna buy a simple planner, a little cheap one from Walmart and just start writing down appointments writing down all the things that I want to do, even if I don't get it done. Um, at least I don't feel that mental weight. And, um, and I already told myself from the beginning, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. But I just kept slogging through and, and doing it. And then eventually, I found my groove, I tweaked the things I was doing and figure out how to make it work for myself. Mm. Um, and like I forced myself not to give up because I've given up before um, when I would, would do things or, or when I would try to prioritize. And, and then of course it didn't work because I let it go. Mm -hmm. So you just have to, to pick one, start, start badly, fail, <laughs> <laughs> but keep going. I love that. It reminds me of uh, I'm reading Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. And, you know, she says have that uh, poopy first draft, right? Yeah. She uses a different word, but um, we're on social media, so I won't. But, you know, she says to have that that crappy first draft. And she says to just get it going. Like you got to start, start small, start ugly, doesn't matter. Um, and I love that you just reminded us all of that. So um, Louie Lynn, I absolutely have loved watching your progress uh, as we've worked together. I mean, a little over a year now, I feel like, right? So, um, and, you know, and just the growth you've had and that you just keep, you keep plugging away at it, even when you fall off, you know, and, um, and I think that that's phenomenal and, and your family is better for it. And yeah. I can't wait to see what happens to the little traveling chefs. Um, you'll have to give us a link for that. Um, but thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with all of us. I think it's incredibly inspirational to hear how those baby steps and that habit stacking really can make a massive impact on your entire family. Um, and I love like just to wrap it up, like turning the like messy, ugly, stressful chaos into lovely laughing chaos. Like that just, that image is just so beautiful to me. So um, thank you for sharing your story. Well, thank you, Dana. I mean, if I did, if I hadn't found you or followed what you've done, or if you didn't create all of this, I wouldn't be here. Oh, thank you. Um, well, you did the work. Um, <laughs> you did all that, all the hard work. I was just here to be your guide. Um, but you've, you've really put in the work and, um, and really just continued to show up. And, and that's why you're here, right? Like, it just done amazing, amazing work. So um, congratulations on your work. And I'm excited to see where it takes you. So Thank if you. this um, helped anyone who's watching this right now, please, please, please give some love to Louie Lynn in the comments. Let me know what is your biggest takeaway. Put a hashtag takeaway in the comments. Um, we are going to be doing one of our free Calm the Chaos workshops. We're actually doing our seven days to less chaos workshop coming up real, real soon. Um, so if that is something that you would like information on, we're actually going to be walking you through exactly how to create your own time and energy plan plus seven other plans that will help you go from, I'm just going to use Louis Lynn's words, go from ugly, messy, stressful, yelling chaos to beautiful, lovely, laughing, joyful, playful chaos. Um, we're going to show you how to do that during that. So just put in the comments calm and one of my team members will make sure to get you that link so that you can join us because uh, we're going to be starting uh, pretty soon. So uh, once again, thank you, Louie Lynn. And thank you to all of you guys who have stayed and watched and listened to Louie share her story. Um, and I just want to remind each and every one of you that if you're feeling 
down and out. You're feeling like you've got too much chaos for this to even work for you. I want you to know that you are not alone. Matter of fact, you've got an entire army of people behind the scenes kind of rooting for you, even though they don't know you because they've been where you've been. So all you've got to do is reach out. If you need that support, just put calm in the comments and we will be there for you. You are amazing. Go forth and conquer your day. Bye guys.